this master class, I will speak for about 10 minutes on challenges of writing successfully to the end of your memoir. Uh, writing the beginning of a memoir for a lot of people is a, it's an easier task than writing the end of their memoir to wrap it all up so that the memoir is coherent and, and impactful. Um, after I have done this brief presentation, there's so much to do that I've just selected a few points. Uh, I will take your questions in the order that they appear in the chat room. So as we are going on and you have a question, please uh, write it in the in the chat room. Um, the challenge uh, to finishing a memoir, to ending a memoir. So I'm, I'm talking about writing the text to the end more than just the actual act of finishing. Um, Probably you simply don't know how to bring your story to a satisfying conclusion. Now, this is a technical problem, and it is one uh, that uh, a first-time writer uh, just doesn't know how to do it. So if you're a first-time writer, and most of the people that I work with are first-time writers, so why should you know? I'm going to give you some ideas. Number two. Well, you've gotten tired of writing and you can't master the energy to continue to the end of your story. This discouragement in some way is also a technical problem. It's not about you. It's about you not knowing the technical process. Uh, as an only time writer, you just simply haven't mastered writing. So these two issues are, are, are to some extent functions of the fact that you're a novice at memoir writing. Um, th these two issues are really remediable uh, ones. Um, the third common reason that people have a difficulty uh, in their um, ending the writing of their story is that they have lost the vision uh, that they once had and they can no longer sense what it was that they wanted to convey, why it was so important for them to write a memoir at that point. And I put in a quote here, where there is no vision, the people perish. That comes from Proverbs, uh, a biblical book. Um, and when there is no vision in your writing, the memoir uh, perishes. The memoir does not have a future. Um, for those of you who do not know me, uh, and I know there are a number of people who have never heard me uh, speak, uh, I am Denis Ledoux. I'm a writer, I'm a teacher, and I'm a founder of the Memoir Network. I'm so pleased that you have come uh, to spend uh, a half hour or so with me this afternoon learning more about how to write your memoir. Memoir writing is a topic that I uh, spent many years thinking about, and it's a topic that I am very interested in. This master is brought to you by the Memoir Network's coaching services. Uh, coaching can take you quickly to where you want your memoir to go. We are currently uh, looking for six new coaching clients. That's, that's about how many writers my coaches and I can handle, can add to our already existing list of uh, coaching clients. Uh, for a limited time, we are including a sign-up bonus, a free copy of the memorable story, Write Your First Memoir Draft. That's a $200 of value, which you can go on our website and you see that's what we sell it for, to each of the first six clients who will sign up for six hours of memoir coaching. The memorable story, which you would receive with your sign-up, consists of 10 lessons presented in print or audio formats. Uh, so the one you prefer, you, you could use, or you could use both of them. This self-paced tutorial includes multiple downloads, more than I can mention here. You can try going to our site and just list the whole, um, the whole uh, list of, of uh, downloads of books, of MP3s, of reports, of exercises that we offer. No, I want to say that each video in this Better Memoir Masterclass series focuses on an aspect of memoir writing, whether that aspect is technique, motivation, publication, or any number of other topics. In this particular video, 
I'm going to talk about right to the end, and I'm going to draw inspiration from my book, which is right to the end, eight strategies to thrive that's available on our web store, or it's available on uh, on Amazon or uh, draft or digital or any other uh, medium. Um, today, what I am going to teach you, what I hope that you will learn uh, is um, or are some basic reasons that people put off finishing their manuscripts. And I'll also offer some suggestions about how to finish your manuscript, how to write to the end of your story, so that you can finally hold your book in hand, so that you will have this book that you say, this is what I worked on the last year, two or three. Holding your book, the results of your hard work, is a, just a really satisfying experience. I've had a number and I've enjoyed having them. Um, I've enjoyed having them uh, to, to hold and to, to put up on my shelf and to know that uh, the work that I have done has come to fruition. Uh, I, I, I thought that I would throw in a, uh, a photo of some of my workshoppers. They're listening to a woman reading from her stories, the woman with dark hair has her stories in a three ring binder. And um, she is reading the story out loud to a group. I recommend that you keep your stories in a three ring binder. For those of you who might be just a little bit discouraged, printing out your stories, putting them in a binder is a way for you to see how much you've already done and uh, to, to feel just the, the task uh, adding up to a success. Okay, why do writers put off finishing their memoirs? Um, one reason is some people enjoy the process of writing and researching and are just reluctant to give it up. This may be especially true of retired people who are finding writing to be a meaningful activity in, in their days. They're retired, they have nothing to do, so they write and research and are not looking forward to ending this. Now, finishing a project for them would mean losing something that's pleasurable and meaningful. The solution to this is so easy. <laughs> Write another memoir. What's, what's holding them? Finish this one, start another one. Uh, writers may be diffident about whether they have written a text that is good enough. They are perfectionists who are constantly rewriting. So here, I'm not so much going for the content as I'm going for format. Is this the right word? Is the phrasing very good here? Do I have a nice images? It's all about the form rather than the content. This other one, number three, people may be afraid of being judged for their effort, which they feel will be found insufficient. This is all about the content. They, they feel that people will say, this is what they spent two years working. I mean, they got it. Kidding, this book is, is, is what they were focused on? Well, that's not a very good thing. I can certainly understand uh, that you would not feel very comfortable uh, about uh, uh, turning this, uh, finishing this book and putting it out into the world. Many writers come to me or to my coaches recognizing that they also have some very serious stylistic and developmental problems, but they are often unable to articulate what the problem it is that they are facing is. Um, they're going to say something to, to me or to their coach, something like, my story is not interesting. Oh, this memoir just rambles on and on. My writing style seems chaotic. Uh, one thing people sometimes will say to me, oh, well, my kids, they have their BAs and their MAs and their all kinds of A's. And I I'm just afraid that I'm not smart enough to write a book that they're going to be proud of. Um, well, I just want to say that that's not the case. I have never, never heard of a, of a kid, a child, a progeny, not being proud of their parents' right. So that one I would put to rest right away. Like many people who come to me, uh, many writers are first time and perhaps only time writers. And it is not unreasonable for these people who have really no experience as writers that they should be unsure of the process of writing and of the results. What these writers may need in, is some coaching to get 
their story in, in shape, just to kind of put it together in a way that really is impactful. Many writers will tell me, well, I want to look good, or at least I don't want to look bad. So I don't blame them. Nobody does. Why is it that people do not know how to write long form? Long form is, after all, what a memoir is. Memoir is long form, not short form. I'm going to talk about that uh, more at length. And in a few minutes, you're going to have a real clear understanding of the two. Teachers in high school and college necessarily advocate for the short form, anything, say, under 30 pages, and, and, and really much more anything under 10 pages. How could a teacher within high school and college deal with regularly reviewing long pieces of writing, pieces, say, of uh, 20 pages, 30 pages, 40, 50, 60 pages? How could they do this every week, uh, every day? The, the answer is they, they simply cannot. It's just too much. So... They also know that most of the people who go through their class write only short pieces anyhow. I mean, it's not that they're producing a whole lot of uh, memoirists and a whole lot of novelists. And if by chance the pieces uh, that uh, the students, their former students, happen to have to write are long, they're going to be reports. They're going to be factual or data oriented. These uh, longer pieces, not long form, just longer pieces, these are essentially longer versions of short form, as these people will string together short form pieces and call each uh, each uh, piece chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, or module one, module two, module three. So this is really just short form pieces strung together. Most teachers know that their students will not need to know how to handle long form. It's so hard to teach, so why teach it? The fact is that they don't teach you. But a memoir that you're doing, that I'm talking to you about today, is not a short form. It is not even a longer short form. It departs from the norms of short pieces. It has its own rules. It's, it is long form writing. There is so much to tell you here, but I will provide one writing technique that will save you a lot of time. And it is what I tell my coaching clients. This technique is, is really pretty special and it's kind of a nugget of what I wanna leave with you today. In a memoir, a segment or a part of the story calls for flowing on to the next part or the next segment of the manuscript. It ought not to be a standalone. A segment in a memoir is dependent on an earlier segment or part of a story and does not need an introduction as do short form pieces, nor ought it to have a wrap up. In long form, endings of segments call for transitions, not wrap ups. They call for links, not wrap ups to the next unit of the story. They do not call at all for wrap ups. I oftentimes call memoirs an anthology of vignettes. And that's what you've got to keep in mind, that you are writing an anthology of vignettes and that you will link them together at some point. Long form pieces also call for occasional foreshadowing and elements of suspense to keep the plot going. They do not call for a wrap up for an interpretation, except possibly in the last chapter. Um, to get to this point, sometimes it takes quite a few coaching sessions for a client writers to learn to leave their story segments open-ended so that when they tie into a new segment or a new chapter, they can do so easily and elegantly. When this happens, the writer is capable of producing more pieces and more stories more quickly. There is much less rewriting time. The writer is finally on to long form. Other challenges of long form include sustaining character, point of view, tone, theme, action. But these are topics are for another time, another video. We're running out of time here. Let's just take a minute, however, before moving on to talk about how a memoir coach provides you with impartial feedback about your memoir's potential be it your treatment of subject matter, your, your style, character development, pacing, the arc of the story, plotting, and so much more. 
why don't why not schedule a complimentary get acquainted session by going to www.thememoirnetwork.com remember that the first six clients who sign up for six hours get a $200 program for free. This is a, a pretty good deal, if I do say so myself. Uh, in conclusion, I want to leave you with this. Certainly, ending a memoir well is a skill that you need to develop as a memoirist. As writers learn to write better and earlier, and earlier in the process, they produce more in less time. Writing to the end becomes that much easier. The practice of leaving your stories open-ended so that the stories can attach or hook to another uh, story segment, another vignette, another chapter, will save you time in the second draft of your manuscript. I've worked with, with clients so many times, and they've turned in little articles. They've turned blog posts. And I have had to, uh, to say to them, take the introductions out, the uh, wrap-ups out, and Let's put these together and work at transitions. That's what I hope that you will remember from what we have been saying. Um, let's see. Learning to write long form very early on helps you, it trains you to think of the story in longer terms than a standalone or a short form story. Now I will entertain your questions uh, in the time that is left to us, we have about 12 minutes. Uh, if you have not left a question in the chat room, you may do so now. So I'll talk to you about Denise Brown. Uh, Denise Brown uh, started writing this memoir when she was in, uh, in college, uh, in her second year of college. Uh, a woman who suffered tremendous uh, abuse. Her parents would both be in jail today if, uh, uh, if they did this today. Um, and she finished her book when she was almost 50. She wrote her book many different times, and she was a very, I would say, a heroic writer who had this vision of what she was going to do with her story, and uh, just just kept pursuing it, just kept pursuing it. It was a, a wonderful uh, experience. Um, if you are writing your story, I'm, I'm just going to answer some of your questions, which you haven't sent in, but this could have been one of them. Um, I talked about what happens if you lose your vision. Sometimes it will happen. Somebody will, will start a story and uh, will, uh, you know, will say, uh, I, I had this real vision. I had this real impetus. There's something that I really wanted to do. And, and it, it just doesn't seem quite so important. I'm just not sure um, about it anymore. Uh, what can I do? Um, I think if this were I in my in my in my memoir, I would put my stories in order. I would put uh, you know what I think is the first story and what I think is the second story and what I think is the third story, and I would put them like the woman in the photo. I would put them in the three ring binder. And then I would just read through them, or perhaps you can just do that on your document. Some people are very physical and uh, enjoy very much the idea of having page after page to turn. Um, I, I would read through them and I would just take notes about how I feel. I would journal around the right thoughts. I would write my feelings. Uh, another thing that I would do is I would do the memory list. If you're listening to me today and you don't know what a memory list is, go to www.thememoirnetwork.com uh, and we have a number of blog posts on memory lists. Uh, we also have an entire book, uh, an entire ebook on memory lists. If there is anything that is a, a magic bullet, it is the memory list. Uh, it will help you to write a better memoir than you thought possible. Um, so I'm going to send you to the blog of, um, uh, of the Memoir Network and you know, go to the categories and then work your way down and go to the memory list and, and there will be a series of articles there. If you want to buy a book, go to the Memoir Writing Series in our in the store and there is a book in, um, on the memory list. Um, 
um, uh, Francie uh, uh, asked about, could you talk about the definition of a memoir? That's a really a good question uh, because a memoir, there's the, 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 um, the popular definition. I mean, if I'm just talking to somebody on the street or something, memoir autobiography ends up being really uh, the same sort of, uh, of thing that people don't really distinguish. Sometimes they'll call it a memoir and it's really an autobiography. An autobiography starts from the beginning of your life and goes up to the present. That's a, a, a strictly speaking, an autobiography, but a lot of people call that a memoir. A memoir, strictly speaking, is a period of your life. So Denise Brown, for instance, wrote about uh, the abuse that she suffered in the first 17 years of her life at the hands of her mother and father. Um, that's a memoir. She's now 50. She didn't write about the rest of her life. She became a professional, a very high functioning woman, uh, a hero, really, a person who, who put her life together. She should have not uh, been successful in her life with what she had to endure but she did. So she wrote a memoir, not an autobiography. A memoir, that's why I said earlier that if a person doesn't want to finish a memoir because he or she is enjoying it and doesn't want the process to end, um, the fact is that you can write several memoirs. So you could write a memoir uh, of, of sexual abuse, uh, just general abuse when you were a child, when she had every kind of abuse. Then the next thing you might write about, she's a professional woman, you might write about her professional uh, development. And then she might have decided uh, to write about overcoming, you know, the psychological, the emotional work that she had to do to forgive the past and to move on to the future. So she could have had three memoirs right there. So a memoir is really about something unique, particular, special. It has somewhat of a beginning, somewhat of an ending. It's, it's a distinct um, uh, period. And that's why you can only write one autobiography. You can write many memoirs. Um, let's see. Uh, Connie wrote, as I started writing, I realized I have gained so many memories I had forgotten. Oh, isn't that the experience? Uh, uh, jot them down, make sure you don't forget them. I'm worried about writing the way I remember things but it's not the same memory someone else may have. I forgot so much during the 11 years of my abusive marriage. So how do you write what you can't fully remember? Um, well, um, there's a, many things you could do. One of them is the concept of the, uh, the, the character's voice. So Connie, when you write about yourself at a certain time, just say 15 years ago. That's the character of Connie. But there's Connie who is the author, the author right now in 2022. Uh, that author can interpose herself in the memoir and, and can say, uh, well, I don't remember the fact as I write this, I can feel the churning in my stomach and I can feel that there's something there that I'm not willing to, to admit or live up to. So there, there are ways that you can use the authorial voice, the, the speaking voice of the author. So every memoir has a character and every memoir has an author. Both of them have voices. So you can drop from one to the other. That's one possibility. Another possibility is, is, is to talk to other people. And while you might say, and while I don't remember, my sister Louise has told me that, uh, you know, in my own memoir, uh, there was uh, my childhood memoir, which I'm about ready to finish this fall. Um, I uh, have got quotes from my brother, quotes from my sister, and I will just go, and this memory is my sister's memory. And it really casts a light on my parents uh, and uh, something, somewhat of their struggle. So you can also do this. You can also journal, and as you journal, when you have that little gut feeling of this is the truth, write more about that. Uh, I have sometimes found that writing um, a short story, writing fiction, that little feeling that you have, well, there's this woman and she's, she's happening. Well, write a fiction around it. 
And sometimes as I have written fiction, all of a sudden something comes to the fore and it's like a light comes on and I think, ah, that's what really happened. It may, it may work that way for you. Uh, good luck, good luck. Uh, this can really open up over a period of time of writing. Don't be a materialist with your writing. Don't say everything I write, I have to keep. No, you're going to write a lot. It's like an iceberg. Uh, Nine-tenths of it is below water. One-tenth is above water. You may have to write nine-tenths just to get that one-tenth on the top. The nine-tenths that's on the bottom, it doesn't mean it's wasted because you're not going to use it. It means you needed it to get to the one-tenth. Keep writing. Uh, Pericleia wrote, if I wrote several memoir stories and put them all together into a book, will this book be an anthology of memoirs or an autobiography? Well, strictly speaking, it's autobiography if it goes to the beginning of your life and goes up to the uh, to the present. So if you're if you're a vignette, well, they aren't vignettes. They're 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 short memoirs, perhaps flash memoirs. I mean, there are all kinds of different names we could apply. Uh, but if they do cover your entire life, it it would be uh, it would be a um, it would be an autobiography. Uh, and, and that can be an excellent way. That can be a really an excellent way of putting a memoir together. There are people um, who don't have the win, I, and I'm not saying that as a negative about you or anybody else. They're, you know, they're just people who don't want to write three, four hundred pages of one story. They, they know they could write thirty pages and forty pages and thirty pages, and uh, they could tie these together. And uh, I think that that's a you know, it's it's a very uh, it's a very appropriate uh, a way to write. Uh, so I would not worry uh, about definition. I, I would just uh, worry about getting myself to be really clear in my speech and my writing, and then uh, very clear in the, uh, who your audience is. Who who do you want to read the, the book, and then make sure that your prose. Uh, your your images, your your metaphors, your 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 whole development addresses that audience is meaningful to that audience. Um, uh, waiting for uh, other questions, I can I can say that uh, sometimes people will ask me, "How long is it reasonable to write a memoir? How how long is too long, or am I doing the right thing?" And I would say as so many other things, it, it it can probably take you, well, it does. It takes you as long as it takes you. This is not to say that you shouldn't have a timeline. You shouldn't have a schedule. I believe very firmly in that. Uh, but sometimes putting a book away uh, is really very useful. I put my memoir away for about four months and I, uh, turn, I opened it up in July and I gave myself a goal to finish the rewriting by the end of July this month. And I, I'm pretty sure that I will do it. I may have to borrow a few days in August, but I'm pretty close. Uh, and what I found was that in doing so, um, I approached it very objectively. Uh, it's like it's somebody else's text. And I read it as an editor. And I thought, now, let's see if Denny Ledoux sent me this. What would I what would I say? Would I say, oh, it's wonderful, it's wonderful. I, no, I, I would look at it and I would critique it. And, and in fact, this week I, I, I found uh, a, a whole section where the transition, it, it didn't quite transition. Then when I hit like paragraph four or five, I thought, hmm. that's the transition. And I said, I need to move that forward. And then I thought, in my lazy fashion, we all are a little bit lazy. I thought, oh, but if I do that, I'll have to rewrite this other thing. And, and I thought, oh. and I thought, no, you're going to move the transition to the beginning and you're going to rewrite it. And I did. And it made such a difference, you know, such a difference in the prose. Um, and so one of the things that you can do uh, is to put a piece away for a period of time. Uh, we have new questions here. Uh, well, there are great points. Thank you very much for the information and thank you. Good. Thank you. Thank you. I'll give you uh, some, other, uh, some other points of, of editing your story. Um, one thing that works really well in editing your story um, is, to, is to do that technique that I have just alluded to, to say, um, 
if I didn't know this story, how would I interpret the details? Uh, for instance, uh, if I said something like, uh, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, I burnt this traditional ethnic pie that my mother-in-law wanted me to make, and I don't mention anything about the process of cooking that pie, why I, who was a good cook, should have burnt it, then the story is meaningless. I have to put the details in that explains why I would have had this problem. So I would say to all of you, uh, you know, just go line by line as you're coming towards the end of your story and to say, would this be meaningful to somebody who's not of my generation, who's not of my cohort, who's not of my ethnic group, who's not this or that that I am? And, and that's a really a pretty important um, it's an important question to answer. Um, we are getting towards uh, the end, and uh, I am. Uh, I can take one more question if somebody has a, a chat. Um, I will say that uh, uh, if you wish to schedule a complimentary introductory session, let's just uh, I get to know you. We spend a half hour, an hour just talking about your project, your hopes, your aspirations, your difficulties, specifically what kind of help you think you could use, what your timetable is, what your budget is. Um, just be in touch with us. We're, I, I will take the phone call. I hope I'm not an intimidating person. And I, will, I would either work with you or we have a, a number of, of coaches. And if, uh, if one of them is more appropriate for you, I would send you on to one of them. And you would also have the opportunity with them to have uh, a, a lengthy getting to know you. Then we have a three hour uh, introductory program that is, a, a, that is a billable program, it is three hours. And it really gives you a sense of whether you really can work uh, with uh, this coach. Anything that happens in that time, the, any, any editing or any, uh, any written reports, any phone conversation, everything is yours to keep. Uh, we are never uh, in working with you. Um, the manuscript is always yours. We're, we're like midwives and we help you to bring your story to its best uh, point. Um, if you are interested, Remember that there is a, a bonus for the first six signups. So you sign up for six hours. So you would do the three hour introductory at 285. And then once you sign up for an additional three hours, that, that would complete your six hours, you would receive a free enrollment in the memorable story and write your first memoir draft. So this is a $200 value. So in essence, you would get the next uh, three hour, uh, next three hours for eighty-five dollars. I, I don't see how you could go along with that. Uh, you can also email me at Denis D E N I S at the Memoir Network uh, dot com. Um, and with that, I am uh, going to. I am going to wish you all uh, a very. Um, very joyous writing. Uh, writing, what you're doing is so special. It, it's it's something that people dream of doing in their lives, and so few people do it. But you are doing it. You're, you congratulate yourselves. You know, you're you're all heroes. I, I think when you write a memoir, you're writing a hero's life. Like you're writing about something that you think was special. So that's a hero's journey that you're writing about. But there's this other thing about being a hero. Writing a memoir itself is to say that I will confront, I will confront my life and I will create meaning out of it. Carl um, uh, Maria, Reina Maria Rilke, um, he was an Austrian poet and he talked about poetry being a momentary order. And when you are a memoir writer, you are creating a momentary order out of your life. And then one day, you will hand this to your children, your grandchildren, and perhaps even the world. Uh, many of my writers have sold uh, not huge amounts, but 1,000, 2,000, 2,500 books. And the books have gone out, oftentimes regional, but oftentimes they're a topic, like uh, one woman who's, uh, whose daughter died from drug overdose um, sold uh, well to a, an 
of, uh, of people who had children who were drug addicted. Uh, so with this, I am going to, uh, to wish you all a, uh, a very, a very uh, happy writing experience. And uh, I hope that uh, the six of you will take me up on my offer. And the offer is good as long as uh, we haven't had six uh, signups. So talk to you later and uh, good luck to you. And thank you so much for sharing this time. I hope that I have been an inspiration for you.